everybody! Welcome to Captera. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the time value of money. And so the time value of money is commonly associated with things like interest, compound interest, which Albert Einstein Frank, uh, famously said was like that eighth wonder of the world. Um, that doesn't make any sense, and he didn't actually say it. And any time you hear a quote from somebody that's interesting, it's probably fake. So um, ignore that. But he would have been sort of right, because uh, <laughs> the way that money changes over time is incredible. So today we're going to talk about time value. We're going to talk a little bit of math, obviously. Hence all the math. But uh, in reality, I want to talk a little bit more about how this is important for businesses and how it can be important for your business. So first, let's do the little bit of math, and then we can get into the details. You all understand the basic idea of interest. There are two ways that you commonly run into it. Your savings account, which pays you effectively nothing, but does it over a very long period of time. And your credit card company, which charges you a huge sum of money and does it constantly. Uh, those are the everyday um, instances of interest. But we actually encounter interest in lots of other ways. So when you take out a loan with your bank, or when you're dealing with your house, your mortgage, when you are paying off a car, anytime you are borrowing or lending any amount of money, no matter how big, there's going to be some time value of money associated with it, some interest associated with it. On top of that, if you do things like invest in a, a property, a program, or um, a piece of equipment, over time, the value of those things changes. So there's also a change in value over time, and that's when we're talking about time value of money. So in its simplest form, when we're talking about interest, you have interest, this is the basic equation for simple interest. This is like, I give you 100 bucks, and I'm going to charge you 7%. At the end of the year, you're going to give me $107. So the interest that I charge you is equal to the principal, which is that $100, times the rate at which I'm lending it to you, which is 7%, uh, 0.07, over the period of time. So I'm charging you that rate over a period of one year. And so this would end up being 7. And so you just add it on, so you know that I was charging you $7 in interest, therefore I'm charging you the interest plus the, plus the principal, uh, and so you're going to owe me $107 at the end of the year. That's really basic. What you run into a lot more commonly is compound interest. Compound interest is when I give you $100 and I say I'm going to charge you 7% over the course of two years. And what that means is that that first year I'm going to charge you uh, $7. But in that second year I'm going to charge you 7% of $107. Because what I did was I compounded the interest. I took the, the principal, I added on the first interest payment into the principal, and then I charged interest on the result. So that means that you're paying a much larger sum. Now, these are going to get exceedingly more complicated, so we don't need to get bogged down in the details. We'll run through them real quick. You can find all of these anywhere on the internet, or in Excel, or on your calculator. Uh, so don't worry, you don't have to do math. So, um, A, that's the uh, total amount that you're going to be charging. So here we're just figuring out the interest, here we're figuring out the total amount. The total amount that you're going to be charging in a compound interest equation is the principal times the uh, times 1 plus the rate over the number of payments per period raised to the power of the number of payments per period over time. <laughs> so um, don't worry about it. It goes up fast, and you end up paying a lot of money. But you can also end up making a lot of money. The key to this, and the key to all of this, is the understanding that there is a change that happens over time, and that things that are valuable now become more valuable. Things that seem valuable in the future aren't as valuable as they seem. That's what we're really talking about. And that's what we're talking about when we look at these things. The future value of uh, money and the net present value of money or investments. In these, and again, with some of this, we're not even going to bother diving into the math. And I'm sorry if you came here for math, uh, but you can get this anywhere. The key to these is understanding that if I have $100 right now, it is more valuable to me than someone saying they will give me $100 at the end of the year. And that's because over that period of time, over the course of one year, I can turn $100 into much more than $100. And I can turn it into at least a little bit more than $100 over the course of time without almost any risk. There's some risk. But without almost any risk. I mean, even if you put it in the worst savings account possible, you still, at the end of a year, will be coming out with $100 and a penny or something like that. And the other thing that goes into the time value of money, and the reason that money tends to decrease in value over time, is that there's uh, uh, the overall um, change in the cost of goods. So if you look at something like the Consumer Price Index 
or uh, any of the other indexes that track inflation, you see that over the course of time, my $100 buys less and less. And that's not because things are getting different or my $100 is slowly whittling away in my pocket. It's because over the course of time, uh, there are more things and there's more money. And so the value, this is, I'm skimming the top, but the point is that that $100 decreases in value over time. So what I want to do is I want to understand whenever I make a business decision that requires investment, whenever I make a business decision that requires me to put money down or to save money or to lend money or to borrow money, you have to understand what that money today means to your business five years from now. If that money today is not worth what you would get if you just held on to it, then there's no reason to make that investment, besides some personal reasons. Uh, but if, if you can take that $100, that $1,000, that $2 million, and turn it into $5 million in five years' time, then there's no reason to not make that, make that uh, investment. The problem and the hardest part of running a business that starts to look at its long-term growth is understanding that the things that you do today have a huge impact on what your business can do tomorrow. The success that your business can have in five years, and three years, and ten years is all dependent on the choices that you make today. It's all dominoes, right? From here until the end of time, it's dominoes. And putting the right dominoes in place means that you have more options, you have more money, you have more assets available to you later in time. But you have to understand how all the dominoes are linked up and how they're going to fall. If you don't understand that, if you don't understand the basics of how the money that you have today decreases in value or increases in value depending on the investments you make, you're not going to end up five years from now being in a better place than you are. Um, that's a really short primer. I hope you'll look into it a little bit more. We've got plenty of information on the Capterra blog. If you go to the finance blog, which is linked down below, uh, you will be able to find the article linked to this, and we'll put in some specific examples so you can see some real numbers associated with all this stuff. Um, for all your business software needs, please visit capterra.com, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Have a good one.